Santa Ola, I'm not Santa Ola. Ears of French practicing and talking a Latin language. And of course, a double L is spelled as an L because that's how Argentina works. Brain. If you were gay. Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to your daily dose of Sophiness, which has been very, very monthly lately. However, this is me redoing my program because I'm back home, and you are amazing, guys. Thank you so much for what you have helped me achieve with Seasons of My Love and The Hour of the Doctor. You are absolutely lovely. Thank you so much for all of you who liked it and watched it and commented on it. I love you all. And now that thanks have been given and I am now with a clear conscience, let us proceed with some death things. Beautiful death. As some of you may know, the people who have been watching Game of Thrones unless you've been living under a rock, the Beautiful Death project was a, mo a very interesting one. It ran all through season 4 and a lot before it started because, you know, there were quite a few people who died before season 4. However, what Robert M. Ball really did capture was not only the essence of why those people died and how they died, but also some subtle things like in the Red Wedding one. Spoiler alert, there was a Red Wedding where a lot of people died. The fact that it was the strings that had blood pouring out of them. That was such a beautiful detail. Let's move on to books. What I did choose was a book that has changed quite a lot in my life. And it's a book called Tale for the Time Being. It was written by Ruth Ozeki. She's a writer, half American, half Japanese. The story follows two people. You have Ruth, which is not a writer, but it might be, who is half American, half Japanese. Wow, what a surprise. And Nao, which is short for Naoko. And she's a Japanese girl who used to live in America. So again, a clash of cultures and it's the story of how these two people get connected through a diary that washes up on the beach shore. It is such an interesting introspective into, hum into the human soul, into how people interact, into sacrifices and it is in the end a great tale about death and how we approach death. I really really lo loved it and I would recommend it to everybody who wants a book which includes Quantic physics and Schrodinger's cat and you know death and suicide and a lot of different recipes for food and a lot of things about diaries and Japanese culture and the Second World War and the kamikaze and brothers and ghosts and Buddhism which was awesome and now I'm I think I may have become an unofficial promoter for this book because I have currently bought about five different editions and distributed them all across my friend base. It's a really, really beautiful book and I love it and I want everybody to read it because it is it is one of those books that really does change how you how you think about life and especially how you think about the end of it. Uh, that will take us to our movie, which is based off a book and it's called The End Is My Beginning. The book was written by an Italian journalist who spent most of his life in Eastern Asia. Tiziano Tarzani wrote this book with his son, Falco, right before he died in 2004. And this book is basically a summary of all his life experiences. And what I loved about the movie wasn't just all this web of philosophy that was created there, because it is a lot of philosophy and it's not a movie with action and girls and, you know, people just blowing their heads off. It is a movie that blows your mind, but it blows it from the inside because there are some ideas there and some views on life that are absolutely superb. And the ending scene on the mountain, I'm pretty sure every single one of you will adore that scene because the way it is filmed and the light that's pouring over the mountain, it's, it is definitely one of the most beautiful images I have ever seen in a movie. It's one of those scenes where you honestly feel like there's something more than just what we see and feel and understand. It's something that goes beyond everything. I don't know if you believe in God or not, but the image is beautiful. So give it a shot. I'm sure you'll love it. <clears throat> now, um, we all know about a particular show that does take death quite seriously. Especially by the fact that people keep on dying, but don't. And I'm starting to wonder whether or not my obsession with Supernatural is starting to dawn into the Supernatural, because it is starting to get a bit unhealthy. Unless you will hear me starting to recite in Latin the next time I see you around, then I guess it will be okay. Okay, Supernatural. Ah, It is Supernatural, and it is awesome and it is fast and 
mysterious and the guys are brilliant and the story is getting increasingly good and thank god for that because I was really worried in the first two episodes of season one but by now I am all calm because it's really going where it should these people are taking risks with their, with their script writing and I love that in a TV show it might be C CW but it is good to my great surprise it is a good show remember that thing with the music that I've been doing the music of the week um the hour of the doctor <laughs> no just kidding Really. Who is a cryotic fan here? I'm a cry fan and while we all know how awesome his voice is, I'm here to introduce you the guy that did the song called Limelight and that we all adored because Cry finally got to sing and rap in a, an officially produced and professionally made song for a band. His name is Dave, he's from England, he has long hair, he wears his hair dyed with some red usually and he is amazing. He's a good friend of Dan Bowles, he usually makes his tracks. He's a rapper as well, he does music, he is awesome and I would really really advise you to listen to him. I like that he usually mixes um, styles and that was really interesting to see when he did um, Watch Dogs. And you may also check out Limelight because Limelight is about Ellie, Elizabeth and Clementine. <clears throat> In the background, of course, you might, you might um, pour your own feelings into it, but we all know it's about Ellie, Elizabeth and Clementine. Okay, and the game of our generation, The Last of Us Remastered. Well, with the dawn of the new PS4, we obviously got a new version for The Last of Us, which was like the best game ever. That sounded so cliche, oh god. The thing with The Last of Us Remastered is that the quality of the image is stupendous. They literally blew my mind about everything that is possible with a game console. Like, I know how good the story is, how good the music is, how good the direction is, how good everything is. So I'm just telling you, you should play. If you've got a PS4, go and buy the remastered version because it is such an amazing journey. That was it. I will be splitting up these things from now on because it they take a lot of a lot of time anyway. So if you want to see something become viral, comment below and let me know, and I'll make sure to make it so. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Later.